Hi, this is Tamika with Pages, Pumps and Pine. I'm here with a setup video for my uh, budget planner for 2023. This is a plum paper customized budget planner I purchased from their Black Friday sale. I had it punched and I've added it to some expander gold happy planner disc. And I am going to be making a frosted cover and some divider bookmarks to add into this. So I'm going to start here. I lettered my name. I'm just going to get a marker and go over that. I'm going to take it off the disc. Uh, I'm not the greatest at hand lettering. I'm still learning and need to do more practicing because I will start practicing and then I will stop and then I'll start up again and then I will stop and then I'll start up again and you get the idea, right? So I just want to be more consistent with it, that's for sure. And I know it's not evenly spaced out, so I'm going to probably end up putting a sticker there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here and let that um, dry before I erase the pencil. And so I, what I want to do is I want to create a divider bookmark for the monthly section and a divider bookmark, of course, for um, the weekly section. And then I'm going to add some note paper in the back, and I'm going to have a divider for that. All of this is going to go into one of my Planners Anonymous um, planner covers. So let me put this aside for now. <clears throat> what I'm using to make my dividers is this Planners Anonymous Shop to Drop Kit. I figured this kit was just like, I mean, come on, it's it's perfect, right? It's just perfect. So I'm going to be using this paper and this savings card die cut to make the divider for the monthly. Then... I'm going to be using the shopping, fun shopping paper and the piggy bank for the weekly. And then I'm going to use this one and this little mirror um, for the notes because I figure the notes will kind of incorporate saving, shopping, all of that. What I plan on adding in that note section is a, is a list of my all of my monthly expenses and approximately what they are and the date. So I have all of that. And then also a list of all of my autom automatic payments. So I was going through my bank account and writing all that stuff down. Guys, I highly suggest you do that. You won't believe what you're spending money on until you do that. And it was very eye-opening for me. And I was like, okay, that's a lot of little payments that are coming out every month. And they start to accumulate and, and add up. So even though I really want to keep everything that is being automatically deducted, there are a few things that I'm like, I'm not using them. I need to just cancel them out. So this is going to be how my dividers are going to be set up. <clears throat> now I'm kind of second guessing this. But no, this is what I'm, this is how I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so that's going to be how I'm going to do the dividers. And then I also have, and I don't know if you can see this well, so let me show you an unopened package. I bought these flexible cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. There are two in the pack. And to give you an idea of how opaque it is. So if you look at it, whoops, against this paper, you can see, you can see, 
through it fairly nice and it's not too thick so I believe my cutter will be able to cut this so I'm going to cut this and make a uh, frosted cover as well so I'm going to go ahead and get started I'm going to start with the cover first I've already taken my measurements I'm going to want around the corners so I figure the best thing to do is to cut it so that I already keep one of the rounded corners, you know. Um, I'll have to still round one because it was just the two outer corners that were rounded on the cover that's already on there. And I want to do it in a similar fashion. So I need this cover to be seven and a half inches wide by nine inches tall. So that means this side over here needs to be the nine inches tall. So I'm going to start with that. <coughs> <clears throat> and you may not be able to see all of my cutter and that should be fine guys because I just cannot fit everything into view oh I'm gonna have to cut it this way first so I'm gonna have to cut the seven and a half first because of how long this is so let's do the seven and a half on this side so let me do this so seven and a half and I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a ruler because I because of I need to make sure that that's at the seven and a half mark so let me just put this ruler against that seven and a half mark okay Try it again. Do what they say, measure twice, cut once, or something like that. It goes. I do want this to be as exact as possible. Okay. And okay, I felt that shift. I literally felt that shift, and now I'm not happy about that. It. It did not go in a nice pretty line at all and that's why I bought more than one so let's try another one that's already upsetting me but I'm trying not to be too upset about it but I literally felt that shift it as it cut it shifted itself oh, yeah, yeah. okay let's try it again all right so we're doing seven and a half I might have to tape it down or something I don't know so there's the seven and a half okay let's get some washi tape let's measure it again seven and a half some washi tape down on it I don't know if you can even see that in the frame but I put the washi tape down hopefully it will not slide again and then let's try this again all right <clears throat> Now I need it at nine inches tall. I'm trying to think which edge I want to keep. I want to keep this edge. So let's do nine inches tall. I'm going to put the washi tape down again. And we're going to cut. All right. Now I'm going to use this We Are Memory Keepers disc punch to punch it. 
I'm going to use this corner rounder, round quarter, quarter rounder, corner rounder. Oh my gosh, I can't say that. Um, yeah, Cor <laughs> corner rounder, corner rounder. Say it again to make a corner rounder. Corner rounder. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit to move it along here. <clears throat> Excuse me. that's good so as far oh my god I got everything falling let's move this out of the way now as far as the punches go I'm going to Pull the cover, the other cover, and pull it off. Okay. So it is a little short. you're supposed to start this if you need to start it that's the thing so let me try this again y'all how do we <laughs> I, how am I supposed to start this? Like, seriously. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, let me think about this for a second. Because I need to get it started, but I'm not sure on how I'm going to make that happen. <coughs> Does anyone know? Okay, I had to pause and figure it out. Okay, so for all of you that know me well, you know I have no patience. Those of you that are new, welcome, welcome. Just know on this channel, I have like no patience. My patience was not set up for this. I could not figure it out. I decided to just pull out my Happy Planner Punch and it got stuck at one point. And so, I don't know if you could tell, it kind of screwed up right here. I, I, I just, it, this is going to do. I can't. I literally don't have the patience to wait around and try and figure all of that out. So, it's going on like this. And this is going to do. Um, it will be much easier to do the dividers, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, see, that still looks good on there. And I had to actually start over. I had to open, thank God I bought two packs. There's two of those placement, uh, what are they, cutting boards, cutting mats, whatever they are. There are two of them in each pack and something told me to buy two packs. So thank God I bought two packs because I screwed up the first two and I had to open up another pack. Oh goodness yeah so if anyone knows how to start that punch gladly fill us all in in the comments but 
I couldn't figure it out and I just didn't have the patience to keep trying to figure it out. So there's the, the cover. There we go. <clears throat> what I should have considered is that the Happy Planner stem is longer and so I should have measured it a little longer to cover all of that. But that's mine. I still like it. So now let's go to the dividers. <clears throat> So I've gone ahead and figured out how I want to measure these. I'm, I'm doing these based off of another divider, Happy Planner divider that I had. So they're going to be five and a half wide by nine tall. So this is going to be the width. So I need five and a half on this. But it's not going to be nine tall. Which is fine because the paper is eight and a half, which that's fine. That's fine because of the direction of the paper. But that should, shouldn't should be that big of an issue. So we're just going to cut all of them at five and a half width is what we're going to do. And then the last one here, five and a half width. Now that we have those cut, the next thing that we're going to do is get ready to laminate them. But prior to that, so we're going to put the savings card on this one. We're putting the piggy bank. You know, I'm going to put the piggy bank on that one. And then we're going to put this one on this. That's how we're going to do it. I'm switch that around okay so here's the thing I'm undecided about now the back of these have a watercolor wash right they all have a water watercolor wash on the back which I'm fine with the watercolor wash what my concern is with these die cuts is do I just put it in the laminator like this let it laminate it and pray that this doesn't shift in there or do I use the adhesive backing that is on the back of these but the problem with that is if I pull off the entire backing it's gonna stick in that laminating sheet which I guess that will be okay and then I thought about partially sticking it. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. So let me, so if I were to partially stick it down, so suppose I did about halfway and I did that, then I would have to use adhesive and that part would be on the back. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? So that was the dilemma that I was having. If I just do it like this, then that white, that's on the back anyways. <clears throat> Either way, it's going to be white on the back, whether I remove the adhesive or not. But I'm just afraid of the adhesive sticking inside of the laminating paper. That's the one thing that I'm just not sure about. <laughs> and again, that I'm going to have the dilemma of punching these after the fact with the lamination. Because I don't know how in the world you're supposed to start this dang punch. That's very frustrating actually you've got to start somewhere and it just it's just not making sense i don't know if there's i don't know i don't know how it's supposed to do i tried it and let me explain it exactly what i did because i'll show you again so here's where i wrote my notes right so if i put this in and i let this 
hit flush against here. There are some measurements on here. There's a three fourth, there's a one half. Let's see if I let it go all the way there, right? And then it should evenly space everything. Cut. So that, that's the problem. It's going to be above, that was the problem I was going to have with the cover. It was going to be above where I needed it to be, if that makes sense. So if I only go to this one half mark in here, let's see how that works. So then that starts about, okay, I think I know what I need to do. I think I know what I need to do. Okay. All right. Now I just need to decide how I'm going to put this in the laminating sheet. I guess I can take the entire backing off. That's probably gonna be the easiest thing to do. All right, let me grab my lemonade sheet and we'll figure this out. This should not be this stressful. <laughs> it's paper. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, so I have here some five mil laminating sheets. I usually like to put my stuff flush towards the sealed in. Okay, let me just peel this off, guys. We're gonna hope and pray for the best here. That's what we're gonna do. Remove the sheet and kind of eyeball this. You know what, I have a tea ruler and I'm gonna use it this time around. Gonna use it because I want this to be straight. Let's see. it down just a little bit all right so we're gonna put it down like that and then we're gonna take our laminating sheet Shove it all the way in like that. Okay. Now to the next one. Let's do the same thing. Let's get the T ruler. Maybe we can do things straight.
It's feeling crooked to me. I don't know why, but it's feeling crooked, but we're going to go with that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and open this one up. Alright, and then the last one with the piggy bank. Some tweezers here. It's this one having a minute, taking a minute here. There we Might as well use the tea ruler, right? I bought it for that reason, so I could start doing things straighter. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go run these through the laminator because the laminator is in another space in the house. It's not in this room. I'm gonna run these through, cut them out, and then we'll try punching them. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, I've run them back through the laminator again, and I'm going to try my best to punch these the correct way. I'm going to base it off of what I did a minute ago, having this at this one and a half inch mark that's in here. I mean, this half inch mark. And we're going to go from there. I can tell right there that that one didn't punch right. And I think I'm going to stop there. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to stop at eight punches because I'm afraid that if I do the ninth punch, but it will be right at the edge. Oh, I'm going to need to do the... Look at that. Well, that answers that question. But I still think it's going to be right at the edge. Let's just pray that it's not. It is right at the edge. But... There we go. There's my divider. So that's the first one. All right, let's try the next one. All right, at least we got it to, to work, right? So let's go back in here. This seems like a long setup. So we have the monthly. And in the monthly, I wanted this one. Okay, and then in the weekly, I want this one and 
And then in the back, I'm going to put note paper. So let me go all the way to the back. So at the end of this um, planner, I have the monthly review. And then there's a folder. And then behind the folder, there was a few pages of note paper here. So I'm going to put this right in here. All right, now, <clears throat> I have pulled some note paper that I have from one of my teacher planners. It says, this one says pencil it in, and then this other one says teachers are going to teach, which is fine. This is for a budget planner. I really don't mind that it says that. Um, so I'm going to put this note paper back here. So the paper is going to fit differently because, and I didn't realize this until after I bought this planner and I was watching someone's video setting theirs up and they said how the height is a little different and I wish I hadn't known that um, because as you can see this paper is taller and I'm going to show you let me close it up and you can see there it's taller the happy planner paper oh my god there's a net and it's driving me crazy um but yeah I'm looking at these dividers, y'all, and I could possibly cut these down because they come so far over. So even if I do them like this, will they still? So barely. I could possibly cut that last punch off. Because they'll still come above the cover a little bit. I'm probably going to end up doing that. I'm probably going to end up doing that. I won't do it for now, but I'll probably end up doing it later. Um, but yes, yeah, so I have that paper that I wanted to put in there. I also had this old skinny classic that I'm not using and I have tons of filler paper in here um, and these are half sheets but I thought why not add these because if nothing else I can use them when I'm doing maybe some quick calculations or trying to do some special sheets and I just need a half sheet size in here so I'm going to add just that black and white paper. And I do have this in case I need more. So let's go back to that note section. And add the half sheets. I hope everything's in frame, y'all. I apologize if it's not. Okay, so... There's that. Um, the folder. Let's put it in the very back. It's not on my paper. Um, let's put the folder in the very back. And we'll put this folder in the very back. Okay. Now I think I'm ready to add this to my planner cover. So. I have this planner cover from Planners Anonymous. It is the Sakura planner cover. It's a Happy Planner classic size. Has this beautiful charm on the outside. It um, these also came with my planner, so I thought I'd add those in here. I have a notepad here and a notepad here. This is punched for rings, but I just keep it in here like this. I already have a pen in here. I have several pockets. I have this beautiful pen here. I have strings in here in case I want to add any string booklets or anything like that. 
I have those in here. I have um, this pocket here, this pocket here, and this pocket here. This pocket here is not going to be a functional pocket because I keep a Happy Planner cover the back part in here to make it easy to put my planners in here. So I'm just going to add it just like this. And with keeping this in here, it makes it easier um, to change out the planner cover because this is a very tight fit in here. And it just sometimes makes it very difficult to pull that in and out. So now I have this all in this planner cover. And this is how I do my work there too. So there it is. It fits in here nicely. Like I said, I'm probably going to cut down those dividers. Um, I think I can cut off. Let's go ahead and take them out. I can cut off... Um, What did I say I was going to do? I'm trying to remember now what I said I was going to do. Oh, I was going to cut it and put it on the second punch. And because it'll still go over the page. So then I can cut off. Let me get a ruler. Let's measure this. I can cut off about a little less than three quarters of an inch off of each of these is what I can do. So let's put this aside. So we'll do a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. I'll end up running these back through my um, laminator again because that's what I like to do when I cut through it. So let's see. gonna work better for me is to cut them down like that right, so if we go back in here and put them back in like I was saying on the second punch oh my god that's so much better oh I am so so glad I thought to do that and see, I can still see it above everything and know where to go. All right, January. So here's January, the first weekly. And then the monthly. All right, now. I'm not going to be showing a lot of this planner, or well, probably not much of this planner at all. Um, I may do one more video regarding this planner. I, I am going to try and do some type of savings challenge. And I saw a post on Facebook today that had so many different ones. So I might come back and talk about the savings challenges and the different ones that I've seen and determine which of those that I want to do. One thing I know I'm, I have talked to myself about this is that since I don't have a car payment anymore and I get paid twice a month and I was having my car payment deducted in two payments every month, I want to take at least one 
of that those payments and put it in the savings. So what would have been a payment, one of the two monthly payments, I want to put it in savings. So doing that alone, just doing that is going to give me quite a bit at the end of the year because my car payment was pretty expensive. So that will uh, give me quite a bit of a savings already doing that. And so I'm thinking if I do an additional savings challenge to that, that I want it to be something smaller because this is going to be hundreds of dollars that I would be doing every month by putting aside what would have been the car payment. So maybe do something smaller. I've seen a penny challenge. I saw one that was just like a $5 challenge where it increased by $5 every week. Um, or maybe I will try to do just an additional five to twenty dollars a week i don't know there were i got overwhelmed literally looking at this facebook post earlier so many different savings challenges on there um but yeah so what i plan to do each month since i will have that list of my payments i'm going to write in everything every month so i know what it is then on the weeklies when I'm logging my expenses, I can color code them. They already have some things color coded. So essential, which would be things that are just basically a need. Then there's dining out, travel, entertainment. Most of my additional expenses are going to be dining out because I don't really go anywhere. I don't really do anything. It's work and home primarily. Um, but at least I'll be able to color code those. So, for instance, if I buy planner stuff, I can use one of the colors for that as a category. So, that's what I'm going to be doing with this part in the weekly section. And then every month, I think I showed this in my planner lineup, we have this monthly income tracker page. And I don't know how zoomed in I am on that, but... Here is where I can map out how well I'm doing with the savings goals. So I know I want to do the car payment. I'm not saving for another car, but I could put in here car payment savings, right? And so, and I could put it in quotes because I'm not really saving for a car, but that's the amount that I want to put aside each month. And then whatever challenge I end up doing, I could put that on these lines as well. So if I do more than one challenge, I have plenty of space here. I'm not really saving for anything right now. Before COVID, I was saving for travel and I have quite a bit saved um, for that. But I think I might continue saving for travel because that is definitely something that I want to do more of. And I want to get my godson a passport so that I can do some international traveling with him because when you travel, I find that the biggest expense is usually lodging. And that's the thing that you usually don't take the most advantage of when you're traveling. You're out sightseeing or doing whatever. So I hate that lodging costs so much because you're basically paying to store your belongings in a room. I don't know if anyone's ever thought about that, but those are the kind of things that I think about. So I almost seem to find lodging as a waste of money. So yeah, so travel, I, I might continue to save for that, although I have quite a bit already saved for that. Um, so yeah, that is how things are going to go. I don't know. I don't know how comfortable I feel talking about all of my personal numbers. So that's going to determine what I come back to if I come back to this planner at all for a video. So I have everything here in my beautiful Planners Anonymous um, planner cover. Even though these are expander discs, with this elastic band, I still have room to put so much more stuff in there. As you can see, 
there's still so much room in here right so sometimes the disc they do kind of shift around a little bit but yeah this this cover is such a tight fit that I just keep it in there I don't try to pull it out anymore so here's my little frosted cover which turned out pretty well proud of that we had a few issues with that and then of course we have our cute dividers that we made they're really really cute and this is the shop to you drop kit from planners anonymous i don't know if this is available right now on the site but you could definitely go over there and check and then i always have a link in the description box below to save on your first subscription so i might be back with a video i might not I'm not sure, but this is my budget setup. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Also, guys, don't forget to slay, subscribe, like, and accept the alerts so you don't miss any videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.